Hi everybody, this is Jeff from Rick Robotics, and today I have another Genesis video for you. So this is part three of the Genesis project. So in this video, I wanted to discuss the neck and how it works. I've actually done a redesign from the old neck, which had two degrees of freedom, moving it left and right and up and down. This neck has three degrees of freedom, allowing it to do the up and down motion, the left and right, and it can move side to side as well. So first I'll go over how the neck looks and how it's built. When comparing the new neck to the older version, you can see that this one sits a little bit taller. Looking at it side by side, you can see that it has a couple more components, including this big geared wheel here, and then this geared knuckle that interacts with the up and down motion. This also has this, except it's here on the other side. And I've chosen to put a gear with a small reduction on there to give it slightly more torque. I've also done away with the servo block that I got from Servo City to use in this project. And instead I created my own. And I'll go ahead and show you that in the CAD. I've also redesigned the component electrical dish right here and I've made some modifications that make it easier to mount the electrical components and manage the wiring. As you no doubt can tell, there aren't a whole lot of electronics in this particular model right now. And that's because this is just nearing the end of the testing phases. For now I wanted to just give the demonstration for the neck and show you how it works. Most of the pieces I'm using in fact for the face and even the base here are just test pieces that I've developed just for the purpose of making things a little easier to assemble and to test them as I need without actually disassembling the original Genesis project. That way I can slowly change them out or integrate them as needed. So before I get into the actual demonstration, let's take a look at some CAD and see how this is designed. Here's a quick look at the CAD that we have for this project. And we'll go ahead and just start off with the base itself. I've done a little redesign on the neck section here where it's a little sleeker and narrower. I've also made room for a servo and that actually mounts independently. So if I go ahead and hide this piece, we should be able to see it quite a bit better. So I have this section here that houses a standard size servo and then that servo uh, runs a small spur gear which in turn twists the larger section up here on a bigger spur gear. And this is all held together by an M8 bolt that goes through here and that is also attached with a lock nut. and I've cut just a small section here to fit a lock nut as well. I use a quarter scale servo in here and that drives a bit bigger gear and there's just a small reduction it's only about maybe a 10 percent reduction but then that will in turn drive this gear here which will allow it to tilt back and forth and then that section mounts up to the next geared knuckle over here which is this section above the tilt part here we have this geared knuckle which attaches to the real base of the skull 
and the face will actually mount right here against this blue section. I'm not going to show that now because it plugs up quite a bit of the drawing. But this is all held together with an M8 bolt. And you can see this servo here will actually drive the jaw and I've just left that included for now. But the pitch of the head is driven by this top servo here. And that will allow the movement from left and right. So that way we can control all three axis at a time. So here we have just a look at the electrical dish here and I just wanted to show you guys that real quick. We have room to mount an Arduino Mega plus the shield and then the Arduino Nano and the mount that I spoke of earlier for that. We have room for a small audio amplifier and of course it's 8 ohm speaker. And then on the other side here I have just a small compartment that will house the IMIC2 text-to-speech module which I use to generate the voice. And that actually has a little more room in here for maybe a couple other components if we need to, plus plenty of room to hopefully manage all of the wiring. So as you can see, I can still move the head up and down. And its range is somewhere about 120 degrees. I haven't measured it precisely, so that might be a little inaccurate. But I would say, giving this particular range, it's around 120 thereabouts. And of course I can still move it left and right. And without doing any particular measurements on that, I would also estimate that it's between 120 and 145 degrees. For the third axis, we can tilt the head side to side. This range of motion is probably somewhere between 100 and 120 degrees. I decided to add the third axis to make the head move a lot more naturally. And I actually experimented with five or six different types of designs and this is the one that I settled on. I've I had several issues with the other versions slipping or jamming and not quite moving as naturally as I had hoped. So this is the iteration that I think is going to work the best and it actually does support quite a bit of weight. I put a two pound dumbbell in the carriage where the electronics will sit and it seemed to handle that pretty well except for uh, a bit of slip on the tilting side to side axis. So as long as I don't have more than two pounds of payload in the head itself I think that our motor should be okay. So with this third axis I've been playing around with it quite a bit, and if I get really good at it, I can do kind of a head roll. You can see this is quite emotionally expressive with the addition of the third axis. Even without such things as the eyebrows and the jaw, to help enhance the particular robotic emotional state, if you will. Just simply tilting the head can do wonders as far as what the robot may be trying to, uh, to represent as far as a simulated emotion. So overall, I'm really happy with the way that this neck has turned out, and I think it looks very promising as far as my tests have gone so far. I'm really excited about getting the electronics into it and the new software put in, and making this a little more emotionally expressive as we go along. Well everybody, that's all the time that I have for today. Uh, I will be 
making another video very soon on the Genesis project. This one's taken a long time, but then again, I have also spent a considerable amount of time working on this and other projects. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like the Genesis project, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and let me know what you think about it. Give me any suggestions you want. If you hate the Genesis project, give me a thumbs down. I'm going to keep building it either way, but I definitely want to hear your feedback. Also, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel. I know it's still a relatively new channel, so every subscription really helps me out, letting me know that you guys care and that you want to see more of my projects. Also, be sure and check out the project I'm doing with my eight-year-old nephew right here. It's called the Danger Dog Project, and we are building a Jim Henson-style animatronic puppet that hopefully we can learn to create and puppeteer and possibly use in some of his own YouTube videos. We've been coming along quite well on that, and we'd love to hear your feedback and our progress. So please check that video out and let us know what you guys think about that. Also, if you like this project, please consider supporting me on Patreon. All of your Patreon contributions go directly to the Genesis project and making that project go along a little faster so that I can produce better videos, more videos, and more frequently. So please have a look at that. You can support me for as little as a dollar a month or even make a one-time pledge. Any way you want to slice it, I really appreciate it. Alright guys, that's all for now. See you next time.